Welcome back to the Code Wolf. Today we're going to recap some key.NET announcements from Build 2024 as fast as possible. This video is intended purely as a rapid fire overview of what's going on with.NET just to keep you in the loop of things. So make sure to also check the description below for plenty of links to more detailed resources. However, I'll also, of course, follow up with deeper dive videos on many of these topics, so make sure to subscribe to not miss out. The channel is almost at the 2,500 subscriber milestone, so please help make it happen with this video and leave a comment about what feature or topic you're most interested in. Let's build. Now the updates for .NET at build can be loosely organized into five categories, which are the overall .NET platform, obviously AI, .NET Aspire, ASP.NET Core, and c -sharp 13. So let's start at the top with the .NET platform. .NET 9 Preview 4 was officially released in time for build, so you can install it now. You'll have to have this latest version installed to access some of the new capabilities that we'll cover in this video. Microsoft reiterated that performance is a major focus for this release across the framework. Container and native AOT app sizes are smaller, memory usage is optimized, exceptions and loop performance are improved, and plenty more. The memory usage in particular is improved by a new server garbage collector mode that can dramatically reduce memory usage in certain scenarios, including potentially huge improvements for apps running on Kubernetes. Microsoft also continues to invest time and effort into making sure that .NET runs cross-platform. For example, .NET packages are available to install on Linux from official feeds and are updated for security patches on the same schedule as Microsoft. For instance, you can install .NET 8 on Ubuntu by running the command sudo apt install .NET 8. AI is undoubtedly the primary focus at build 2024, and .NET has received plenty of updates here. One of my personal new favorite updates is the new .NET AI samples GitHub repo, which provides all sorts of demo projects for different AI scenarios. You can check these out and build off of them to implement similar scenarios in your own apps. Next, we have the general push for semantic kernel, which isn't new at build, but it continues to receive updates and attention for obvious reasons. Semantic kernel is an open source SDK that allows you to orchestrate your existing code and its connections with AI services and tools more easily. There are new features to streamline building plugins, assistance, and other integrations in your code. I'm planning to dive into this cool toolset in an upcoming video. .NET will also receive its own dedicated OpenAI library in partnership directly with the OpenAI company. This isn't available yet, but it should be very soon, so we'll look at this more when it's released. Finally, ASP.NET Core is introducing AI-powered smart components, such as Smart Paste, Smart Text Area, and Smart Combo Box. These components are built into the framework and provide some very basic AI or smart functionality, such as extracting data structures from pasted text. It'll be interesting to see where this idea goes over time. Now, perhaps the most significant announcement for .NET at build is the general availability release of .NET Aspire. That's right, it's no longer in preview. .NET Aspire is a cloud-native stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed apps. The main building blocks of this stack are as follows. Orchestration allows you to manage the configurations and connections between the different resources and services that your app is composed of. Components are NuGet packages designed to simplify connections to different platforms and services, such as Redis or Azure Storage. Service discovery streamlines communication between the different services of your app, so you don't have to manually manage concerns such as URL addresses of individual resources across different environments. Deployment features streamline the process of taking multi-resource apps to the cloud. And last but not least, the .NET Aspire dashboard offers powerful app monitoring and inspection tools, such as the ability to view logs, traces, and environment settings in real time. ASP.NET Core also includes some updates with this new preview release. Most notably, ASP.NET Core now has built-in support for open API document generation at build or runtime. This is no longer a default dependency on the Swagger packages we've used in the past, but it's still just as easy to set up using only two lines of code. 
A new hybrid cache API has also been introduced to improve distributed caching support. This new service expands the iDistributed cache support with new capabilities, such as multi-tier storage and improved management over what's stored in L1 or L2 caches. On the Blazor side of things, we now have constructor injection with Blazor components, which is a welcome addition that I've personally been hoping to see for a while. WebSocket compression is now enabled by default to further improve interactive server rendering performance. You can also now force static rendering for globally interactive apps. In other words, you can set up your app to use interactive server or WebAssembly globally, but then pick and choose which pages still render with static server-side rendering. And for our final category, there's a couple interesting improvements to c -sharp that are worth mentioning. Starting in c -sharp 13, params now supports additional options beyond just arrays, such as list of type T, span of type T, and I enumerable of type T. c -sharp will also soon receive a big new feature called extension types, though they aren't quite available yet in preview 4. Extension types basically take the concept of extension methods even further. They allow you to supply extension members for an underlying type, which means they can have methods, properties, and apply to a specific instance or an entire type. This topic is beyond the scope of this video and not available for demo yet, but I'll try to create some content around this when it's released. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date on these items. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment with your thoughts, and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.